This week's study hall is being held in beautiful Los Santos, the setting of Grand Theft Auto V. Uh oh. Hey, welcome to the first episode of Max Scoville's Study Hall. The first episode ever. I am your host, Max Scoville, obviously, and Study Hall is a show where I take a particular video game that you wish you were playing, and I recommend some related movies, shows, comics, books, music, etc., and so on to keep you entertained when you're not playing that game, whether it's because the game isn't out yet, or because you're stuck at boring old school or work. Here in Max Scoville Study Hall, we play by prison rules, where you either kick someone's ass the first day or become someone's bitch. So our first episode is all about stuff to keep you busy while you're waiting for one of the biggest games of this goddamn console generation, Grand Theft Auto V. In GTA V, players return to the city of Los Santos, last seen in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and there they take control of three different characters, a retired bank robber, an ambitious young hustler, and a lovable psychopath career criminal. But as with most of the GTA series, the real star of the game is the city itself, and the crime that happens there. If you're chomping at the bit for some entertainment to whet your appetite and pass the time before GTA V drops, you're in luck because, spoiler alert, Los Santos is basically Los Angeles and there is definitely no shortage of criminal fiction that takes place there. Since LA is home of the film industry, let's start with some movies! First and foremost, have you seen Heat? Because if you claim you're excited for GTA V and you haven't seen the movie Heat, you suck at being excited for GTA V. Heat is one of the best heist movies ever made and it was shot entirely on location around Los Angeles and it shows. It's got some of the most famous famous robberies in cinema history, and at least one of them, I know for a fact, has been faithfully recreated in GTA V. Heat is known for being one of the only movies that features Robert De Niro and Al Pacino on screen together, but in addition to them, it's got an incredible cast. It's got Val Kilmer, Tom Sizemore, John Voight, Natalie Portman when she was like 12, Danny Trejo, even the rapper Tone Loke is in it. Remember Tone Loke? From Seabear and Jamal? Anybody? Another great cinematic ode to Los Angeles is To Live and Die in L.A., the 1985 thriller directed by action movie pioneer William Friedkin. It follows two Secret Service agents on the trail of a counterfeiter who's played by a very young Willem Dafoe. If you're expecting a clean-cut cops and robbers stories, you might be let down because basically everybody in this movie is a huge jerk and it's awesome. There's no moral center. Everyone's just bad. The film is often described as the West Coast version of The French Connection, which Friedkin directed over a decade earlier. However, To Live and Die in L.A. has a distinctly 80s vibe, which is helped by a really rad soundtrack by Wang Chung. It's an awesome movie, and while parts of it feel a bit dated, its famous car chase scene holds up pretty well. And um, you get to see a guy's wiener if you're into that, so there's, there's that, I guess. It's not Willem Dafoe's, so thank God for that. Now, a good chunk of Quentin Tarantino's movies are about crime in Los Angeles. Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction are considered modern classics, but his follow-up Jackie Brown doesn't get the same amount of love. It's still an awesome movie with a great rogues gallery cast of characters, but it doesn't have that same trademark flair that Tarantino's other work has, and that might be because it's his only movie that's an adaptation of a book. But it's actually really nice to see what Tarantino's capable of when he's staying within a certain confines of source material and not trying to out-Tarantino himself. Anyway, speaking of books, that brings me to my next topic. Books! Jackie Brown is based on the novel Rum Punch by Elmore Leonard. Currently, Leonard is producing the FX show Justified, and he's been publishing books for the better part of a century, and is considered one of the best and most prolific writers of crime fiction. He has this gift for creating some of the most vile, disgusting, and reprehensible characters, but at the same time, they're a little bit endearing. There's a ton to pick from in addition to Rum Punch. I would recommend Swag, Glitz, and Maximum Bob. And if nothing else, his books have awesome names. People will be like, what are you reading? And you'll be like, Swag! Actually, no, don't, don't do that. That will probably get you beat up. Don't do that at all. If you're drawn to a life of crime, but you don't want to actually get in trouble, then you might want to check out the Parker books, written by Donald Westlake and published under the name Richard Stark. The books follow a hardened career criminal known only as Parker, as he does various crimes and heists and revenge plots, and then has sex with ladies. Parker first appeared in The Hunter in 1962, and has been in 24 novels since then. Several of the books have been adapted into graphic novels by Darwin Cook, and Parker has appeared in numerous films, most notably Payback, where he was played by Mel Gibson, as well as the simply titled Parker, which came out earlier this year, where he was played by Jason Statham. Anyway, steering back towards Grand Theft Auto V, if there's one thing the GTA games are known for, aside from letting you steal cars and then run over hookers with them, it's the music. 
In the handful of trailers that have been released, we've already heard a crazy amount of musical variety, which is to be expected. The reveal trailer used Ogden's Nut Gone Flake by the Small Faces, and the story trailer featured Stevie Wonder's Skeletons. Just recently, we got three character trailers. Trevor's used Waylon Jennings' Are You Sure Hank Done It This Way, and if you like that, you might also like his other song, The Only Daddy That'll Walk the Line, which may or may not be describing an abusive relationship. Meanwhile, Michael's trailer features one of the later Queen songs, Radio Gaga, off their 1984 album, The Works. If you like the awesome pairing of synthesizers and Freddie Mercury, then you'd probably also get a kick out of Love Kills, which was his first solo track and was produced by synth wizard Giorgio Moroder, who's going to be on the upcoming Daft Punk album. Fun fact. Finally, there's Franklin's trailer, set to the tune of J-Rock's Hood Gun Love It, featuring Kendrick Lamar. J-Rock and Kendrick Lamar are both part of the hip-hop group Black Hippie, along with Ab Soul and Schoolboy Q, all of them based out of South Central. If you like what you heard in the Franklin GTA trailer, you might as well Google Black Hippie. The group hasn't put out a record yet, but they've been collaborating with each other a ton over the past couple years. Tech 9 went so far as to calling them the new NWA, and if you ask me, that is a very nice thing to say about a bunch of young rapsters from South Central Los Angeles. Anyway, as you guys all know, Grand Theft Auto V is out September 17th on 360 and PS3, and hopefully some of my recommendations this episode help keep you entertained until then. If you have some recommendations of your own, feel free to leave them in the comments. If rap music and crime movies is too real for you nerds, then tune in next week, because we're going to talk about Star Wars 1313. And of course, if you have a suggestion for a game you'd like me to talk about during Study Hall, by all means, let me know. Oh, looks like Study Hall's over. I'll see you guys next week, but in the meantime, remember... Crime is illegal, so don't do it in real life or you'll probably get in trouble. The end.